Good evening, here's our top story. Friday marked the seventh anniversary of the start of the war in Iraq. Now that it's been seven years, Iraq is thinking that it might be time to be invaded by another country. <laughs> <laughs> okay, people, we've got a live show here. Live show here. From home. Live show. Johnny Abbott. Melissa Oki. Entertainment news. Watch this. Other stuff. <laughs> and news from around the world. Tell me what this is, me. This is Top Story Week. Five, four, three, two, one. Hit it. <laughs> Tiger Woods announced Tuesday that he will return to golf next month at the Masters. However, Tiger is also expected to go behind the Masters back and play several other golf tournaments at the same time. <laughs> a magnitude 4.4 earthquake struck Los Angeles early on Tuesday morning. That's adorable, said Haiti in Chile. <laughs> NASA may delay next month's planned launch of Space Shuttle Discovery due to a problem with a leaky valve, said a NASA scientist. Oh. It's okay. Even with all the budget cuts, I'm sure we'll be able to afford those valves someday. Like when the penny saver from Jiffy Lube comes in. <laughs> Don't worry about us, because uh, in space, no one can hear you cry. <laughs> C-SPAN has launched a website that contains its entire programming archive going back to 1987. The website is expected to be the first in history that no one will ever masturbate to. <laughs> it was reported on Thursday that in December, Bernie Madoff was assaulted by a fellow prison inmate. The inmate committed the assault only after he was assaulted by two other inmates who themselves had in turn been assaulted by four <laughs> other inmates. And it just went back like that. <laughs> really? Yes, it was their scheme. <laughs> On Tuesday, was one of them named Ponzi? I think so. <laughs> On Tuesday, Lance Mackey won the 1,100-mile Iditarod sled dog race for the fourth consecutive time. Commented Mackey's lead dog. Yeah, Lance Mackey's the champ because he was the one who was uh, pulling that heavy sled in the freezing cold for 1,100 miles while being whipped. Oh, wait, that was us. <laughs> Hurt Locker director Catherine Bigelow reported to LA County Superior Court last week for jury duty. Bigelow was then dismissed by defense lawyers due to her irrational hatred of blue people. <laughs> and here now with the entertainment news is the number one fan of the TV show Glee, Sparkles McGee. <laughs> did not attend Corey Haim's funeral on Tuesday. Feldman explains he was too busy working on his new reality series, The One Corys. <laughs> we work together. My wife loves that show. Dan Glickman is stepping down as the chairman of the Motion Picture Association of America. The group responsible for movie ratings, said Glickman's wife. Now that Dan's retiring, I'm hoping that our bedroom has a bit more sexual content and adult situations, and maybe even a little bit of partial nudity. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> Tyson will have his own show on Animal Planet about his love of pigeons. Specifically, it will be about Tyson's love of murdering and eating pigeons. <laughs> See what I did there? Mime. And finally, on Tuesday, Charlie Sheen returned to work on the set of Two and a Half Men. 
Also returning to the set, the fear of getting stabbed. <laughs> Ah, uh, thank you, Sparkles. You're welcome! <laughs> a new report has named the Porsche as the world's most dependable car. The world's least dependable car is the one driven by Billy Joel. <laughs> <laughs> a self-proclaimed vampire in Florida announced this week that he plans to run for president. Said the vampire. <laughs> this will be the first time that the member of the undead has run for president. Well, unless you count John McCain. <laughs> Sports Illustrated has reported that Texas Rangers manager Ron Washington tested positive for cocaine use last season. Major League Baseball first became suspicious of Washington after he was caught trying to snort the foul line. <laughs> Scientists at the University of Michigan have found a chemical in bananas that could help protect women from HIV infection. This is great news for women who have sex with bananas. <laughs> Researchers in Britain and Germany say they've created a 3D invisibility cloak. Said one researcher, The invisibility cloak totally works. I tried it on and went to a singles bar and talked to girls. And they all acted like I wasn't there. <laughs> oh no, that's not right. <laughs> A NASA science team looking for animal life beneath 600 feet of Antarctic sheet ice found a shrimp-like amphipod. The discovery by the NASA team raises an important question. What the hell does that have to do with space? <laughs> As mentioned earlier, on Tuesday, Tiger Woods announced that he'd be returning to the PGA Tour at the Masters in April. And here with his thoughts is Tiger's chief golf rival, Phil Nicholson. <laughs> Now that Tiger's coming back, what, what's the mood on the PGA Tour? Oh, I'll tell you what, we are all excited. Just real excited. I mean, having Tiger back is a blessing. I mean, he is exciting to watch. I mean, he is just the perfect thing for the game of golf. Well, it sounds like you're really happy that he's coming back. Oh, yeah, I'm real fucking happy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you know how good this guy can play? I mean, come on. I shit. <laughs> I, I think I do. No, you don't know. Because I have to play against him. He's real fucking good. He's better than fucking good. He's alien fucking good. You're not so bad yourself, Phil. Oh, yeah, I'm not so bad myself, John. Thank you. He has won 74 majors. I am in second on the list, and I barely won half. Okay. That is a shit ton more! Um, Oh, maybe he'll be rusty. Oh, that's a good deal. Let me tell you, let me remind you of something. He won a major with a broken leg. I don't think rust is going to be a factor. I mean, Phil, th there has to be some way that you could beat Tiger. Well, I do have a strategy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Two words. Yeah. Topless caddies. <laughs> that's right. I've got a Playboy playmate to go topsies on each hole. He will not be able to resist, and thus I can win. What if that doesn't work? Well, then I guess I could just hit him in the head like Elon did. Phil Nicholson, everybody. Class act. Class act. And finally, Ping Ping, the world's shortest man who was 29 inches tall, died last week at the age of 21. Burial rites will be conducted just as soon as his family picks out a suitable cigar box. <laughs> For Talk Story Weekly, I'm John Abbott. And I'm Melissa Oakey. Good night. <laughs>